So this exposing a billion dollar plot message. Celsius is a billion dollar company that told its customers to unbank yourself with crypto. But then last year they declared bankruptcy and sold a new shirt. Unbankrupt yourself. Now, at the time, huh? I reported on extreme incompetence, but stopped short of using the F word, fraud, because we just didn't have all the evidence. But today that changes because of thousands of pages of new court documents, Celsius insiders Bungie talking, skin. and my personal interviews with victims. Make no mistake, this was a gigantic fraud. People's lives have been ruined, and the founder might get away with it. So to help shine a light on this issue, here is my full my. investigation into the crypto lender, Celsius. Mm. The police are not looking into it, I guess. So when we're talking about taking back power, it's really not even from the government. It's really from corporations that dominate our lives. And that system, right, does not work for 95% of the people on the planet. Why? Because the banks control all the money in the world. We talk about all the money in the world. What Celsius does is really helps people navigate in a safe way into this environment. So when you use a Celsius wallet, you yep, know, okay, I'm going to earn yield wallet. and I'm going to stay safe in the safe environment because Celsius already did the homework and figured out what's safe. Normally, we trust people that we think are acting in our best interest. But what if these people are not acting in our best interest? What if their interest is exactly the opposite of ours? Should we continue giving them our money or should we take the money and put it somewhere else? To understand Celsius and how they got 30 billion in assets, you first have to understand what they were selling. It wasn't just a place to borrow or huh? lend money. It was it's more than that. It was a battle against the evil banks. And their CEO, Alex Mashinsky, was here to level the playing field. Banks are not your friends. But Alex is your friend? Yes. <laughs> so I, I have a lot okay. of my own money in the company, uh, several hundred million dollars as well. I'm talking about as a user of the service, not as a equity shareholder and uh, so basically everybody uh, came in and said hey can i take the same ride on the same bus with you you're earning 8.8 percent .8%, can i earn it and the answer is yes you get exactly the same you have a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or a million dollars you the same yield as everybody else and this pitch was really attractive not to mention celsius offered eight percent on your money at a time when your bank probably offered less than 1%. Mashinsky said this is part of how he was battling the banks. We basically thought, okay, how many people in the world want to earn more money on their money? Yield. And we said 8 billion people are going to say, of course, I want to earn more money on my money. So the customer was there. The second part was we can because take on the banks money. and win. Why? Because 8 billion people are going to join you. And that was really the key to make that decision. Then we went and presented it to 200 venture companies and they all said, nope, you're not going to win against the banks. So we went to the community. We actually went to the community and said, we're going to build this for you. Do you want it? And we raised $50 million from the community. And then we went and raised $400 million from investors after we showed them, hey, a, a million and a half people showed up, 30 billion in, in asset. They've given us 30 billion. We've proven that people will send somebody money to manage or uh, digital assets to manage. And that was really a breakthrough. No one has done that uh, in 700 years of banking. There hasn't been anyone who actually taken on the banks in the real way. And this clearly worked. Celsius customers told me that the reason they switched was just to get a higher yield on their money. Okay. Honestly, I was looking for a place to stake and earn interest and earn yield on my crypto. I was actually first in crypto.com and then I saw Celsius on YouTube. It had higher yields and everything, so I kind of moved my stuff from crypto.com to Celsius. People were writing about Alex Machinsky and all the messaging on the website. You know, he's an entrepreneur that had created all these companies and he didn't need the money. You know, this was billed as a high yield savings account that was outside the traditional financial systems. Now look, of course, in hindsight, Maybe these high interest rates should have been obvious red flags, but at the time, because of other crypto projects, things didn't seem so crazy. There was also others that were much, much bigger and much higher, you know, look at Luna and stuff like that. So in comparison, it didn't seem as crazy at the time. But it wasn't just the competitors who convinced people. It was Mashinsky himself who gave a really compelling argument that banks were lending out your money and keeping most of the profit for themselves. And he was going to do something different. And we paying fees upon fees yeah. upon fees. Charges $24, 24% per year 
to charge to basically borrow money on our credit card. They charge us 24%, but they pay us 0.1%. So where is all that profit going to, right? It's going to the toll collectors. So the opportunity is really to for all of us to again take the go off the off this toll uh, highway road and go into a new world where we don't we don't pay any tolls, we don't pay any fees. We act in our best interest. And this is the vision that most people bought into. Alex was going to lend out your money and pass most of the profits back to you. 80% in fact. And that was the argument that was repeatedly said. I remember them talking about how 80% of their uh, profits were returned to users as a reward. And so that's what I thought I was doing. I thought I was loaning money to someone that had close to enough collateral to pay back in the event of a default. We then lend it to the institution. The institution are the ones paying the interest. So we've collected over $700 million of interest from the institution and distributed most of that, 80% of that went to the retail users. 80% of whatever we collected. Celsius next year are benefiting because we are lending the collateral you gave us, redistributing 80% of that income with all the other Celsius. So it's a win, win, win. Now, of course, if that's not enough to convince win, you, win, huh? Celsius also said that in addition to making high yield, they were extremely conservative. They told customers that there was collateral backing up all their loans in case of a disaster. And the key thing to understand here is that this secured loan with collateral is much less risky than unsecured loans where there is no collateral. And ultimately, Celsius said because of this, a bank run wouldn't affect them. And every day, we have a process, the daily reconciliation process, where our team, like 20 or 25 people, get on a call, and grind through all the tokens and all the coins and make sure that we have more coins than what we owe the community, right? That's our process. And no bank in the world can do that for you because they never have enough assets to return for you if there is a run on the bank. And these promises of safety and collateralization mm. were key to people promises actually putting their money in with Celsius. When I deposited my money in Celsius, I thought their primary business model was over collateralized lender. I thought they would deposit more assets than they borrowed money on the platform and they'd pay interest to pay return. And so that way I said, hey, I'm not going to lose my money because all these things, all the loans are over collateralized and I'm able to earn a yield. And look, all of this sounds great. And so far we've been establishing why people were so excited about Celsius in the first place. So if that was the case, then what's the problem? Well, the problem was Celsius went oh, bankrupt comes. and not everything was as it seemed. Let's go back to the studio. Background. Crypto lender went from managing billions in assets to filing for bankruptcy in just a matter of months. Well. CNBC obtained dozens of internal documents that in part show disorganization as prices drop and the industry faces a liquidity crunch. The collapse of Celsius came as a huge surprise to anyone li listening to Alex Mashinsky. All the way up to shutting down, he had claimed that Celsius had billions of dollars in liquidity just ready for withdrawals we have billions of dollars in liquidity so anyone who wants to withdraw that's a that's a service you can withdraw at any time so what happened if that was true why did it fall apart well the picture wasn't clear at the time we heard hmm. allegations from people like dirty bubble media that alex mashinsky was selling his own tokens we also found out that alex withdrew money off of celsius before it shut down but at this point, we didn't fully understand why Celsius had collapsed. Was it just incompetence or greed? These were open questions until a few mm. weeks ago, mm. because that's when the court appointed examiner released her 600 page report detailing exactly what happened with Celsius. In this massive report, the examiner details not only systemic lying, a Ponzi like scheme, but also tells us what I think constitutes fraud. Here's a breakdown of the report, starting with the biggest lie of all, the interest you'd get on depositing your crypto. You see, for years, Celsius had been telling people they paid what they did because it was 80% of their profits they were earning from all these loans. And we're very proud as well to pay out over 80% of our revenues directly back to the community. And so this is something that we are gonna to continue to do. And we look very carefully at all of our numbers um, on both sides to make sure that we are doing that. And that's also what is helping us decide the rates um, every single week that we're paying out on coins. But this was a lie. 
According to the report, uh, Celsius I... did not distribute up to 80% of its revenues to uh. its customers because it had little to no profits to even distribute. Celsius also made no efforts to set its reward rates based on its yield. Yes, and look, I know what you're bad. thinking. If they didn't set the rewards based on what they actually were making as a company, what did they set them based on? Well, on getting more customers. And according to the report, Celsius consistently set its reward rates based on what they perceived was necessary to beat the competition. And for most of Celsius's existence, the rewards it paid exceeded by substantial amounts the revenues Celsius could earn. So for those of you following along, the whole idea that we're paying 80% of what we make was a total fabrication. Celsius just wanted more customers, which as you might imagine, works when you're bringing on more assets with new users than you're paying in interest. But eventually when you have billions of dollars in assets, you have to pay rewards based on that. And the Celsius team realized they had a problem. But even as some within Celsius management attempted to lower reward rates, Mashinsky quote, overrode their recommendations and refused to do so. One example of this was when Jason Perman, a Celsius executive, recalled Mashinsky saying that Celsius could not cut its reward rates because of his belief that our customers will leave us. And that quote, our investors didn't invest in us to shrink, they invested in us to double. So with this new understanding that they weren't gonna be able to lower reward rates, they realized they were stuck with the other strategy, trying to raise what they were able to make with their assets by employing riskier investment strategies to try to get closer to profitability. And guess what? They lied about this too. Huh. Even as the company started to make riskier investments like offering unsecured loans, Mashinsky told people the opposite. He said everything was business as usual. Celsius is very, very no, strict as who we man. lend to, right? So. We only lend to the first tier institutions, first tier exchanges. We do not uh, do all kind of unsecured lending like a lot of people are talking about or saying Celsius does unsecured. We do not do unsecured lending. But of course, this wasn't true. Celsius internally had been talking about the number of unsecured loans they were giving out increasing, shown here in orange. And internally on Slack, executives were furious. Quote, I just told him, that the number is increasing and the overall ratio of collateral with institutions is going down. Another executive responded, yes. So why does he publish so dangerous statements? Everyone out there, if you have an unsecured loan, tell everyone that I'm a liar. But in the end, no one did call him a liar, even as he literally asked for it. Here, I'm calling on anyone, anyone who received an unsecured loan, go on Twitter, make a fun out of Alex Mashinsky. Say, hey, I took a loan, here's my loan number, you know, I not took yet. a loan from Celsius and I did not have to provide at least 200% collateral. And through the next year, Mashinsky continued to boast about how safe Celsius was, even as the team began to engage in riskier behavior. In the same year, Celsius would recognize $800 million in losses from some of these investments. Mashinsky told the Financial Times in June 2021 this. From a risk standpoint, we are probably one of the least risky businesses that regulators worldwide have ever seen. Around the time he was saying this, Celsius was over a half a billion dollars underwater on their liabilities, as shown by the black line, which represents a net surplus. By the end of the year 2021, Celsius would owe a billion dollars that they did not have. Things were looking bad. Insane. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought you said this was a fraud. It is a fraud. Oh, no. Maybe to you, copy. There's another way of looking at this. What do you mean? Well, imagine I'm defending Celsius as a lawyer. You're a mixologist and a lawyer? Hey, I could pass the bar if I wanted to. I already work at one. But anyways, what I would say if you were coming at my client is, look, all this lying and losing money, standard fake it till you make it stuff. They could have become profitable eventually. Now, did they fail? Let's yes, pick it, I guess. but trying a business and failing, that's the American dream copy. Do you actually believe that though? Doesn't matter what I believe. If a single person on that jury was an entrepreneur, Alex would walk. Well, either way, your hypothetical doesn't even matter. Mashitsky isn't even being criminally charged. Wait, really? Well, I rest my case then. Yeah, nice try, but it's not that simple. They're still suing him for some of the money. He's just not being criminally charged. And let me guess. You don't think that's enough? No, I don't think it's enough. I mean, it's a slap on the wrist. It's a financial speeding ticket for a guy who ruined so many people's lives. But that's my point, Coffee. 
If you think it's so wrong, you gotta give me more than this. But how? You said it yourself. They're just gonna claim incompetence. They faked it till they didn't make it. Ah, but that's because the evidence so far is lies and incompetence. You need to show a definitive step across that line. That's the only way people are gonna believe you. Well, that and... Not what? Well, this might be ironic coming from me, but it wouldn't hurt to humanize the story a bit. Don't get stuck in the technical jargon. Nobody can follow that. Make me feel something. As much as it pains me to say this, I think you might be right. Let me see what I can do. What does that money mean to me? It means a lot, actually. I've been working since I was 14. I was investing this my first couple of jobs out of college. Ultimately stopped us from buying a house because, I mean, it was half of our down payment was locked and, you know, I couldn't get it. So, I mean, it was a big impact, actually. Honestly, that loss uh, was a culmination of many years of work, uh, to be quite frank. I saw it as my way to escape. What that money means to okay. me, it's a lot more freedom with uh, what we're able to money. do as a family. To describe what Jilly. the money I lost meant to me is really hard because it's tied into a lot of what it feels like to be a grown-up or an adult. I, I feel like I, I have this stunted development. You know, I'm almost 40 at this point, and I'm very aware as a stunt man that wants to be physical. If we have a kid okay. last year like we wanted, all right, maybe by the time he's 20, I could show him some stuff. But the longer we wait, the more I watch my my dreams and my future and my hope to be like a proper functioning adult slip through my fingers. It's it's hard to describe what that's tied into, but it just feels like I can't proceed with life. <laughs> if that makes sense. It does make sense. And hearing these stories made me realize just showing lies isn't enough. If I'm going to demonstrate fraud, I need to get to the heart of Celsius. And that's when I found out about the flywheel. The flywheel was central to Celsius's plan to become profitable, and here's how it worked. Celsius was not just a crypto platform. They also had a crypto token called Cell, and they controlled the vast majority of it, up to 95%. So if the price of Cell went up, theoretically, the balance sheet of Celsius would also go up, and they could sustain these insane reward rates. However, in order to do so, they needed people to actually want Cell tokens. So the flywheel was Mashinsky's plan to do that, to create a positive feedback loop. And the way they did this was set up sell token like a rewards program, where you could earn bonus interest if you held a certain amount of sell, which obviously incentivizes people who wanted to get the most out of their accounts to buy and hold these sell tokens. On their website, they describe this process as a self-sustaining ecosystem where users would buy sell, earn more yield, get more crypto, collect interest, earn more yield, play more coins, done. collect more interest, and buy more sell tokens. Now, of course, you might notice a problem here. What if people actually go to sell their sell tokens? Wouldn't that crash the price? Well, Mashinsky had an answer for this too. He told the community that Celsius would buy sell tokens in order to pay their rewards, theoretically creating demand out of thin air. Here's him explaining this. Basically, more visitors usually translates to more app downloads and that translates to more deposits. More deposit oh, allows man. us to do more loans more loans uh, generate more income, and more income means more income that Celsius generates from these coins that people gave us, translates into us having to buy more Bitcoin, Ethereum, sell token, and so on. So, okay, that's the flywheel. Why does it matter? Well, the flywheel and this sell token became the place where all sorts of shenanigans happened with Celsius, because while the community was aware that they were buying back sell to pay rewards, what they didn't know was that Celsius was using customer funds to do so, to buy their own coin. What they imagined they were doing was that they were using all this profit they were theoretically generating from making these loans to buy their own token. But that wasn't the case. This was because, as we said earlier, Celsius wasn't really profitable at all. So the only money they had to buy sell token was their own customer's money. But it gets even worse. Because starting in 2020, Celsius decided to substantially expand its purchases of Cell for the purpose of increasing Cell's price. Instead of buying Cell when it needed to pay rewards, Celsius began timing its purchases so that they would prop up Cell's price by creating activity in the market. Now, of course, the question is here, why would Celsius go beyond its mandate to purchase more Cell than necessary and artificially boost the price? Well, perhaps it has something to do with the top holder of Celsius, being Mashinsky and his executives. 
and this was the only way they could sell some of these tokens without crashing the price. According to the investigation, quote, between 2018 and June 2022, Mr. Mashinsky sold at least 25 million sell tokens, realizing at least $68.7 million on these sales. Daniel Leon, also a founder of Celsius, sold at least 2.6 million in sell tokens for at least $9.74 million as well. That's a cash out of over $70 million, while Celsius was buying these sales to prevent the price from going down. Quote, Celsius often increased the size of its resting orders to buy all of the sell that Mr. Mashinsky and his other companies were selling. The former chief financial officer would write, we are talking about becoming a regulated entity and we are doing something possibly illegal and definitely not compliant. Some employees, of course, were even more direct. Quote, if anyone found out about our position and how much our founders took in USD could be a very bad look. We are using users USDC to pay for employees worthless sell. And even worse, in 2022, their coin deployment specialist described their practices of buying up sell and using customer coins as very Ponzi-like. And a few weeks later, when this person was asked where money was coming from to buy sell, this person would say, users like always. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the core story. Not merely lying, it's a story cool. of using customer funds to buy out your executives and manipulate your own cryptocurrency so you can sell for a higher price. In fact, Celsius's own purchases of their own tokens were such a large component of the market that overlaying the price of Celsius with the amount that Celsius was buying results in a near perfect match of the price change. And ultimately what this meant for the end user is that the money they thought were being used for safe loans or for generating yield were actually squandered on this flywheel mechanism. And the result was that Celsius just didn't have the money to pay customers back. And what's so wild about this is that Celsius didn't even need to buy their own sell token in the first place. They already controlled 95% of all the sell tokens in existence. So they could have just paid rewards from that instead of buying sell on the open market. When asked why they did it this way, one executive responded that the answer lies in who holds the most sell. Uh, in other words, buying sell on the open market was what propped up the price which benefited no one more than Alex Mashinsky, who executives would refer to as the oh, biggest medium. seller by Next far time. and depressing the market, selling up to $165,000 a day. As a result of all these actions, by the time Celsius would pause withdrawals, they had a shortfall of over $7 billion owed to customers, which after a crypto crash was more like four to $5 billion. Either way, hundreds of thousands of lives were ruined. And this, in my view, is where Celsius crossed the bright red line. Rather than just being an incompetent lender, they had created a scheme with sell token where new users funds had to be used to prop up sell token value, which benefited their executives. It also created a need to use new customer funds to pay out old customers because of their impossibly high rates of rewards to fuel growth. According to the examiner, this all meant that Celsius Network on a standalone basis has been insolvent since inception. This meant that new users always had to keep on coming in to keep Mashinsky's flywheel going. And when they stopped coming, it was doomed to collapse. This is the textbook definition Ponzi of a Ponzi scheme, where new users' deposits are required to pay old users' withdrawals. And according to the examiner, this actually oh, happened explicitly multiple bad. times. One example is from June 2022, when Celsius relied on $33.4 million of USDC of new customer deposits to fund withdrawals of old customers, which Celsius couldn't afford. And this, unfortunately, is the real story of Celsius, a Ponzi scheme designed as a way to take on the banks and fight for the little guy. But hey, don't take it from me. I'm just a third party. Take it from the victims themselves. I asked them what they thought. So this was an absolute fraud mm -hmm. from the beginning. I mean, it turns it out that a lot of these businesses that they claimed to be propping up Celsius were completely fraudulent. From what I've seen from the examiner, more and more it looks like it was just a, a textbook case of a Ponzi scheme. I don't care if it was a Ponzi scheme from the very beginning or the very end, it still was a Ponzi scheme. It doesn't matter if he meant to start a Ponzi scheme. 
right? But the second you got into those circumstances, it, it becomes fraud. They're basically losing money from the very start of the company, and they're literally lying in front of everyone's faces saying, yeah, oh, it's totally fine. Yeah, you could totally keep our money in here. Yeah, I would totally invest more if I could. As they're currently at that same time withdrawing funds as they're literally on camera lying to everyone's faces. He made a lot of egregious claims on his Twitter, on his website, on his podcasts he would do claiming uh, if Celsius ever went bankrupt, all the customers would get all of their funds back. You know, there's tweets of him saying that. And sure, as a CEO of a company, you would take that word at face value. You would believe him when he says your coins are going to come back to you. And now that everything is coming to light and showing that essentially what he was running as a Ponzi, I do believe he should face sip jail time and the people that were also oh. involved with it that were enabling yeah. that behavior. There needs to be an example set or we're going to see more of these grifters in, these, in this space like Sam Beck, Freed, and, and others who, who just take advantage of people who believe in the technology, who believe in innovation. And you're not supposed to steal people's money. Just plain and simple, you know? It's uh, it's called theft. It's a Ponzi scheme. Just being stripped of all of your wealth like that. Emotional, psychological yes, torture. Yes. You ruined people's oh, lives, Alex. Yeah. You ruined their lives, man. I've seen so many people who are retired. I've seen people who are disabled. I saw people who are basically in like different types of countries that their average salary might be $100 a month and they lost $1,000 and they don't even know how to feed their families. I've, I've seen people who are literally on the verge of being homeless, if not homeless already. And you see this CEO who is gloating about this and taking money out. I think without a doubt, if like the justice system prevails, Elg should be in jail. Well, that's our story. Mashinsky about these allegations and he declined to comment except to say I should talk to a Celsius employee named to clear up the FUD. Now I talked to this employee but they declined to go on the record themselves and when asked if anyone within Celsius wanted to speak with me I was told nobody is willing to go on the record with you. So that's where we're going to leave that. And as for Celsius the company they're trying to reopen their doors. They have a new plan to basically distribute whatever's left back to the holders and lawyers. And I'm not going to go too much into the details of this plan, but if you're a creditor, you can visit this page to learn more. Uh, it's not a perfect plan by any means, but I'm not sure I have any better ideas of what to do with such a bad situation. So that's it for me for now. I hope the wait was worth it, guys, for this video. Uh, we're trying to level up the production behind the scenes. So if you enjoy uh, all the in-depth investigations, just because again, in that is another Ponzi scheme. Just to just plan the investigation. I have the interest. Seems like disaster about to happen. Some people don't suspect.